Hello, good evening. Um, my name is uh, Casey Adams. Um, I'm from Biafra Land, Imo State Biafra Land, and I live uh, here in Hamburg, and um, I'm a core and a hardcore IPOB member. Yes, I have um, watched briefly uh, uh, the video from Mr. Udo from United States, um, and uh, I'm going to report to most of the things he said because I believe. Uh, that uh, he was speaking from a lot of ignorance as regards to what IPAB is doing and what they intend to achieve. Apart from the fact that everybody knows IPAB is uh, agitating for a separate, uh, a separate country, there are some other informations that are not very true that uh, I would like to um, talk about now. Uh, to start with, Mr. Clayton said, uh, Mr. Udo, as I said before, um, said something about uh, the Nigerian Senate uh, debating on Biafra or uh, talking about confederation. Uh, he, he made a mistake by saying Namdi Kahlo uh, uh, gave an interview where he said what he wanted was a, a confederate uh, state. Actually, it was a big mistake uh, from Mr. Udo. Namdi Kahlo is outrightly asking for uh, Biafra separation from Nigeria. And uh, this has been the request, and nothing has changed so far. As regards to the Senate uh, bill on uh, devolution of power, uh, which uh, Mr. Udo was, um, was mistaken for confederation, uh, the, the Nigerian state, uh, Senate has been debating uh, so much on devolution of power even before now, but the, the achievement or advancement of IPOB in discussing uh, the ni issues in Nigeria has advanced this uh, discussion. So what happened was they voted uh, in the House to see if they can uh, develop more power to the state, uh, which uh, they eventually ended up voting against it. So they did not uh, uh, vote to accept or accommodate a referendum as it will enable Biafra to see it. No, that was not. Uh, the pressure on them uh, was, uh, according to the Nigerian, uh, one Nigerian thinking was uh, for them to vote uh, for more power to the state, which they also rejected. Yeah, Mr. Clinton, Mr. Udo also talked about the idea of uh, uh, Biafra no more on the uh, Senate uh, issue and I have to say it has never been the Senate uh, like I said earlier they have been running up and down to see how they can uh, fix the the issue of uh, Biafra which have led them to discuss extensively in the house whether to vote uh, to start uh, giving power or to restructure the country and unfortunately they voted against it so there was never been a time uh, the, the Senate is doing anything to support uh, the coming of Biafra. What actually we expect was for the Senate to have uh, sat down and make an expedient law in order to accommodate referendum, which uh, is not in the Nigerian constitution, but it did not go towards that direction. What they rather did was to find a way to see if they can uh, make some move as a palliative move in order to uh, sort the people who are asking for uh, um, for a separate state, which eventually it ended up in a no vote and no go area. Uh, Mr. Udo uh, wanted us to believe um, or ask that question if Nam De Carlo, uh, the director of uh, the leader of IPO Indigenous People of Biafra, if he has in, in any way informed the people about. Uh, the rejection of uh, this bill uh, I know, at the Senate, and I say it has never been an issue that the people are waiting for the Senate to make any law to accommodate self-determination. Uh, the Nigerian government, including the Senate, uh, they have all rejected the idea from, from the outset. So what they tried to do uh, was to see what they can put together uh, before the people. But Namdi Kahlo in any way, uh, or the IPOB members are not in any way waiting that these people will do any law. Because the only thing we ask is a date for a referendum, or there will be a boycott of election as a way to register our discontent with the system. So those who are saying that uh, 
uh, the call for referendum is a call for war, uh, outrightly ignorant of what uh, it is, you know, in any given system uh, or any given country or society for people to who feel marginalized, who feel that their value system, their culture, that everything they stand for has been uh, somehow matched upon and would want to talk about self-determination. It's not a call for war and it has never been in any way. We have so many examples, uh, including the Brit Britain trying to pull out of the uh, European zone. It has never been a war. Scotland was the last time uh, on a referendum, though uh, they were defeated, but still, the, throughout the time they were calling for this, there has never been any, 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 anywhere the, those who are in the authorities have seen it as a war. It can only happen in a Nigerian society. So let me say, IPOB is not hoping for Nigerian Senate to make any impact unless uh, they also want to take it upon them to resolve the issue amicably by making uh, the issue of referendum to be very, very uh, you know, possible, uh, at least for us to, for the IPOBs to try. If they fail, then it should be. But this time they've not done anything uh, we are not also waiting for them to do anything to advance our cause. What is the next step for uh, for the IPOBs now that the Senate uh, have uh, you know crashed the idea of uh, 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 self determination? It's a very wrong impression. I've said it uh, almost all the time. I'm talking here that we have never in any way uh, waited for the Senate, and the Senate has not done anything directly to advance the cause of. IPOB. What they did in the Senate was their uh, scramble to see a way to, uh, you know, do something uh, to hold on the agitation that have always spring out from every part of Nigeria. Now people are talking of self determination. So what they did was to find a measure uh, to calm the nerves, and they, they failed. What they did, they, they, before they voted in the House, what we had was the Senate was trying to. Uh, uh, pass more law, uh, more power to the states. Uh, most importantly, resources control uh, was at the key front of this debate, which in the end, the Senate uh, voted against it. So mm, IPOB or the director of uh, Radio Biafra and the leader of uh, indigenous people of Biafra has not in any way uh, asked us to wait uh, in any measure that after the debate in the Senate that, the, 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 that is when we know what to do. No, we have uh, strictly been doing uh, the campaign for self-determination, enlightening people. Then as regards to uh, the election boycott in Anambra, what we call it is election boycott. The sensitization going on was for people to know their rights within the Nigerian constitution to boycott election the field that is no more answering the question of the common people. So the idea of disrupt has not come. It has been very clear uh, from the leadership of IPO that people should not accost or make any trouble in the efforts of uh, sensitizing people about what boycott of election is. So IPOB have no any arrangement or any plans to disrupt any election. What we are asking people from that state is that they should boycott the election. It is within their rights as a people to say to vote or not vote. Uh, even because of uh, the way the Nigerian state are looking at boycott of election, our leader have now called for seat at home. So as you can see, it is our right to boycott election or to sit at home on that day. And what we are trying to do is if uh, uh, Anambra election uh, did not hold, it means that the people of Anambra have rejected Nigerian states. In any normal democratic setup, it, the, the, the country has to look inward and see uh, that they you know, give the opportunity for referendum or go in some, uh, another sort of uh, discussion with those who are agitating to address the issue that they have. So people who are looking out like Mr. Udo, uh, actually, I don't even know where we didn't tell us which state it came from. He says 10 minutes to the heart of Biafra land. You know, these people, uh, a guy that is not born in Nigeria, I believe he must have lived his life out in the U.S. But what baffles me is that this man uh, could not be able to at least speak like somebody who have lived in an organized society, knowing fully well that when people ask for 
self-determination uh, or to buy court election. It has never been in any way that this is uh, something that is being looked at as a preparation for war. So maybe it is his, imagine, his imagination or what he would have wished uh, the Biafrans to pass through, if actually. So there are a lot of people who are very negative, or uh, I can I say they do not want to see the the, the non-violence attitude of IPO which was their quest. So people have been using the mind of uh, the mindset of what we passed through during the military time that there's nothing you could discuss with the military. But they've forgotten we are now in a democratic uh, uh, dispensation that where everybody have got the right to speak out. And I must quickly say that those who are berating in um, the Carlo and the IPOB are very ignorant because these are people who will uh, easily tell you Africans do not know their rights. Africans uh, uh, cannot stand up when they, they feed, when they have been, you know, somehow disrespected or when their right or uh, freedom has been taken out. Now a group of people for the first time in the history of Africa have conformed themselves very well to ask this their right within the precinct of the law instead of citizens, uh, you know, Nigerians or people who have lived in abroad and see how organized the society is supposed to be and see where those rights have been exercised. Instead of them to come up and join to enlighten our people to stand on their right, they all go negative and start talking about uh, how it's going to be a war as if they are now even encouraging the Nigerian state to act like a military while we are in a, demo, in a democratic uh, dispensation. So I'm a little bit um, ashamed of some of our brothers uh, especially those who have traveled wide and uh, uh, who has been around the world, who has been to school, uh, the, the so-called school that does not give them the right to stand up their right to, you know, go down like Mr. Udo and be negative and speaking against what's supposed to be a process, a transparent process. So I urge Mr. Udo to cue in into the the line of those who want to educate, but I don't know where he's coming from. Ten minutes into the heartland could be anywhere around. He must have to be uh, uh, a Biafran as well. If it is ten minutes to the Biafra heartland, uh, that means he's a Biafran. I urge him to stand up, starting from his village, to sensitize the people, educate them that their rights, their fundamental right, cannot be taken. And uh, I'm so proud of what uh, uh, IPOB and our our leader is doing. Because for the first time in the Nigerian history, uh, the rest of uh, Nigerians, those from the north, south, east, everybody have now are now standing up to their rights. People are now a little bit fearless uh, when it comes to confronting the authorities. So I don't think IPOB have in any way uh, done something uh, that not has been done. Rather, we have done something different from what has been also uh, what people are doing in the system. Yes, uh, how would uh, Mr. Udo raise the question as to how would um, the rest of Nigerian state fail uh, when Biafra finally gone? How would the oil, uh, those who are dependent on oil, um, uh, will be carried along? The, this is, has been the issue of uh, Nigeria. Nigeria has um, so many natural resources. Uh, as a matter of fact, the ones from the north, uh, Nigeria is not uh, doing anything. They are not harnessing those resources. Nigerian state have heavily been dependent on oil uh, since shortly after independence uh, when uh, uh, Nigeria decided to go um, after the coup when they went into a unitary system of government. The whole, uh, oil, the whole oil issue has been the issue, the problem there because the oil has sold and the money has been shared uh, in Abuja and the government is not doing anything in any way to help uh, uh, the states uh, to start tapping from their own uh, natural resources and but human resources. So but the question is if we are talking of self-determination for the Biafrans that means uh, we are not answerable to uh, Nigerian states if Biafra happens to come into existence. So far, like what I said about uh, the last debate in the Senate, was uh, to see if the, 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 the Senate can uh, give more power to the states to manage their resources. There has been the problem. Uh, because uh, Nigeria, uh, other states uh, should look inward and see how uh, they can 
be able to make more money to take care of their uh, issues and um, eventually if now even even if Nigeria is to be remain to, to together eventually all you will fizzle out if, if that happened have anybody reason does it mean Nigeria will, will cease to exist so the idea of asking that question does not arise because every state have got uh, their mineral resources uh, they have got their own ways to normally to harness their own resources and, and, and use uh, for their own betterment. So all it has been the issue. I must tell you, um, Biafrans are not in any way prepared to answer uh, for what is going on in the northern Nigeria because even before the oil was found, they were uh, basically into agriculture and uh, you can call them the, the food basket of Nigeria, if not Africa. But all of a sudden, all these uh, resources were abandoned agriculture was abandoned and money have been money from oil have been taking mostly 70 percent of uh, the money going to the north because the peanut they're giving the governors from the south east and southwest who are in support of the 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 government uh, who has the federal government that are taking this uh, oil oil money without taking care of the people these governors too are using it through security votes and other ways you can only see what they call investment is just rewriting a um, a block of uh, a classroom of block and putting a 20 meter road or you know 100 meter road out there uh, kilometer road and uh, this is not investment uh, that's supposed to be getting from the the huge resources that is coming from oil so if Nigeria or if Biafra eventually emerged what will happen is that the resources of oil will be used to develop the parts of uh, where this oil are domiciled and there is no way you expect uh, Biafrans to share their oil but I have also had my director I can't speak for him on this I've had him once earlier on in this uh, struggle said if House of Line actually really uh, will not survive because of the oil, that uh, Biafrans are ready to go into some form, of, some form of agreement to share the oil even for free with them. Uh, as for those uh, multinational companies, however, if they discuss very well, they will also be the people to uh, drill the oils. But what people fail to understand is that oil is not a problem to the Southeasterners or the IPOB members. No what is the problem is the political determination economic determination of our people because we have a lot of ways we could uh, survive even without the oil why the rest of nigeria particularly the northern nigeria are not bringing anything to the table they are just uh, political uh, politicians uh, who believe uh, with the help of britain they can always uh, go into another people's territory and read the oil for, for another 100 years and this is what we say no it's time for biafra to be left alone biafra to decide for its economic interests and uh, political interests biafra to use the resources to help people uh, most people very very talented in many ways uh, to invest in education infrastructure more like you can see in the southwest and the, in the north where the oil coming from the south has been uh, you know, from the southeast and south south has been used or you can say the former eastern region to develop those places while uh, nothing much is being done in our own area so people who are asking this question uh, fail to understand even without oil people must each state must surely find a way to survive and that is even the pressure when we talk of restructuring it's particularly about the states managing the resources uh, for those who are not paying attention to come up with ideas to harness their own resources so that Nigeria will have more instead of waiting solely on the oil coming from the former eastern region and that what makes the will of government in Nigeria not working because uh, the, everybody or every state the governor believe at the end of the month is making them even more lazy even there is a, 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 a state governor from the eastern Nigeria who also came out so confused uh, to say that oh they are so comfortable with going to Abuja to take oil and this particular state governor uh, has up to 10 uh, resources uh, mineral resources in domicile in his state but they fail to abandon these other ideas of raising money rather they prefer uh, to wait for oil money and oil money has been the problem so we 
should not or cannot be answerable if eventually Biafra emerges every state unless there is some form of agreement which I believe if it is the issue that our leader will look into it if oil is their problem to give them oil as much but we know that our interest is more than the oil. Well, um, our plan is very clear to start with uh, indigenous people of Biafra, uh, people uh, who believe in uh, the authority of Almighty God. We believe in our God that uh, with God everything is possible. And secondly, is already Biafra is there, but a lot of people are now seeing it from my own perspective. Uh, you can say more than 90% of Biafrans are now very educated about their rights and uh, which uh, the you know the, the movement with the pressure with uh, desensitization that have uh, uh, energized and woken the people from their slumber I think nothing will make it go back we will either get Biafra or die trying but I be honestly uh, the the war has been fought in the pages of newspaper in the media house and Facebook and I will tell you media because this war is an intellectual war you know when they say in terms of argument and logic when it comes to uh, one putting proposal or, or, or a defense of what you cannot follow up there's not you have no choice than to succumb this war has been uh, ongoing in the nation uh, with the Nigerian government and the rest of other Nigerians uh, and when we started almost all of them were against but now people are speaking out people are now realizing the need to stand up to the government that have done little to better the people so Biafra will come whether anybody like it no human being born on, on, on from a woman can stop Biafra because it's a, it's a God's project this is an almighty project and uh, with what we have seen so far uh, the science idea that God is with us, and in the end, the word must surely come to listing. The word must surely yes, come no, to listing because uh, we are very, very determined. Our leader is determined. Our, our leader is guided by the, uh, the Spirit of God. He's with us, and uh, the, the level of enlightenment and excitement, excitement in the air is enough. And I believe the UN will eventually listen. What we plan is we are going to use civil disobedience uh, to cripple Nigeria. It has already been crippled because since uh, uh, two years, uh, Mohamed Buhari came to power, nothing really has changed. You know, the country is in recession. The leader has run away. There is confusion everywhere, and that shows the hand of God is there. So we are going to keep on pressing. Biafra could come tomorrow. It could come any time. But the level, the happiness there so far is that everybody have come uh, in terms with what their right is and you know there's nothing you can do when people know their right you can try to kill how many people are you going to kill and the way things are going uh, the south westerners uh, who are the euro the eurobas uh, the south westerners uh, the, the, the so-called niger deltans these are our brothers uh, that were divided into many states and given them by the british and then followed up by the not the northern invaders they have they are all coming to the realization of this one very fast that we cannot under any circumstance allow a few people from the north by the help of britain to subjugate and marginalize a whole resources people like us and this is more like we are living under bondage it is now a force that is either you become one nigeria or you are shot so nobody is taking uh, seriously this threat of war or not war ipo is a non-violent organization we will use everything within our arsenal as uh, you know as a civil disobedience right to make sure the government listen to us if they are serious eventually by now we should have all sat down to discuss uh, what the way forward and what we're asking is simple referendum does not mean automatic uh, uh, seeding from nigeria what it does is put us to a test if the whole uh, whole lot of people are grieved and they want this under normal democratic government they should put us the referendum but nobody's talking about doing this our africans uh, we are just very good at uh, trying to see us as if we are civilized but when a simple test is put to us everybody is cowed so it is now very obvious that uh, the, the nigerian government with the rest of uh, educated people and many many people in nigeria that they have fear for the beer france to leave they can't even stand they can't even stand the intellectual war 
they can't even stand the constitutional war and now what they are using is the fear of threat war 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 but one thing for sure is that what happened during uh, the Nigerian civil war of 1967 and 97 definitely will not it's not going to happen like this again and we are not here in the camera to divulge every other mechanism putting in place to what of these invaders but what we know for sure is that we have our god to start with uh, who is with us he has energized us and given us a leader who in in the rest of nigeria we have not seen one like this because he has rejected every offer to be cowed and such kind of strength coming from that man i have to tell you there are one million and two three million of them the carlo waiting to uh, you know uh, do anything that is necessary to see that biafra comes so we're not afraid of Nigeria. They have been killing us, and what people do not know is, even if when there is no full-blown war, we have been living in a war. There have been a series of massacres going on, marginalization, quota system. There is no any amount, no, no, no any kind of uh, uh, strategy Nigeria has not used to make sure they cripple uh, the people of uh, Biafra. And you ask yourself, has it been working? Answer is no. So it is led for them. If they are touched by also the spirit of whomever they worship, because uh, if it is the spirit of God, they must listen to reasoning. They must come down to know that this is a democratic government. People have some alienable rights and must and it must have to be uh, adhered to. And uh, we are practicing a constitutional government, although this government, this constitution was written by a few military men and hand over. So Nigeria is very corrupt. And the very fact, uh, the very fact of tribalism is also playing a lot of role. Like uh, Mr. Udo, if you if you can sense from Mr. Udo's voice, he has pointed out what has been wrong with Nigerian state. But what he has not even said was, how do we come out of this mess? Mr. Udo knows Nigeria is a first state. He knows there is a lot of impunity. He knows that the North is uh, holding us to ransom. Mr. Udo could not offer a simple solution. What is running around is, oh, war, war, war. This is what kind of cowardice. Look, if you're going to die, you're going to die. That's what Biafran's believe. But it's better for a man to die fighting for his right than to sit at a fence and, and watch why, you know, got surprised by a bullet coming from nowhere. So that is my own submission, and I believe... Um, uh, I believe uh, we are winning the war. Biafra must surely come. The generation said that is what we want. And no woman born of a woman will stop us. Not even the entire world. Because we've seen it before. They fought against us before uh, for three years and hold us to ransom, kill our children, kill our children and stab our, our, our mothers and block it. There is nothing Biafra haven't seen. Our cases is equally to be compared with the Israelites. But it is left for Nigerian government to advise itself and I'm very very comfortable people will surely come to reason and when the chips are down because it's not only the Biafrans now the Duduwa Republic is fighting the Middle Beta is fighting the Niger Delta are fighting so this the discussion about Biafra is no more centered of seeding uh, Biafra uh, self-determination it is about self-determination for everybody having uh, known that there are a group of people uh, who have been holding power since independence and uh, very few of them they have improvised their own people and uh, we are not able to society improvise, improvise us and they keep you know pushing forward to make sure uh, they bring us to our knees but with the grace of, with the help and you know help of god they will not succeed and be a must be free